Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for how do I adjust animation in the engine. This video is going to cover two simple ways of adjusting the animation once it's already inside of Unreal Engine. Recording your new animation from existing animations, as well as using keyframing for existing animations to override them using additive layers. So let's look at the first one, recording. Let's grab an existing animation like our character running. This one is a little more difficult to use because it basically records in real time. But if you have something you want to play back, maybe a montage, maybe you have your character punching a couple different times and you want to record that to a new animation, this would work well. So we click our record button down here in the bottom right. It's going to ask us where and what to name the animation. So we'll call this one animation weird. And once we hit OK, it's going to immediately start recording whatever is animating. You can see it here and you can see our current animation playing back. Now we can adjust our current animation. Let's say we want to go ahead and grab one of our arms and we're going to rotate the arm itself while he's running. So now while it's recording, it's recording all of this exactly like this is. And this is non-destructive. It's recording to a new animation track. It's not going to adjust any of the existing ones. We could even jump back and forth between tracks, like you can see here if needed. And once we're done, we can hit stop, and our new animation is recorded, and we'll go and open our new one. And if we look here, let's close this stupid pop-up, you can see our character running, and then the arm adjusting as we adjusted it, as you can see here. If we were to close this, we're going to see something change. You notice how the arm is up and then goes up again. If we were to close this, go to our animation system and open up animation weird, well now it looks different. Our arm's down and then up. So something to keep in mind when you adjust things inside of here. Let me go to idle, for example. Let's take this left arm. If I can grab the left arm. Well, I guess it's his right arm. We're going to rotate it out like that and play the animation. This animation is going to play back non-destructively inside of our editor with these changes as we can see here, the rotation. And if I switch to a different animation, it's simply going to apply that existing animation with this existing information already done. So our arm rotated. So as you can see here, that arm stays up. But once we close this and reopen an animation, our character itself, our preview, is going to reset itself to default. So keep that in mind if something looks weird, just close down your animation system, reopen back a new animation so you can reset your preview model and make sure it's playing back properly. Now at this point, if this isn't exactly what we want or it's close, we have the ability to clip. You can right click on the timeline. It'll show you where you currently are and you can remove frames before and after as well as inserting frames appending and doing things like that. So we could take our weird animation, for example, clip it right when it went up, and then we could play it back and say we want to loop right about here and end it there, and then our little animation will play back like this. I'm not an artist, I'm not an animator, so this is going to look horrible, but that's just an example of making a quick little animation using recording in the engine. Now the second way, which is the way I would prefer to do it, is using keyframing, but this is destructive. So we need to take our animation, make a copy of it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to grab, for example, our third person idle. Copy it over to our animation system here. Now we have a third person idle copy. We're going to name this third person zombie. And we'll open it up. And now we have our character. In this case, I want to take the arms and move them up. So that way it looks like a zombie is walking. So upper arm left. We'll move it up 80. Upper arm right. We'll move it up 80. And that's what we want, our little zombie kind of staggering around. None of these are going to save, though. So if we close it and reopen it, well, it goes back to default. We need to use our keyframing system at the top to use additive layer tracks. So we'll quickly grab our arm again, change it by 80, grab the other arm, change it by 80. And we're going to go ahead and add a key. Now, when you add the key, and we scroll down here, 
it's going to add a key for everything that's been changed at that point. So we have a transform, a rotation, and a scale for the left upper arm, and the same thing for the right upper arm. And you can see they're all keyframed down here. You can see the points that they're keyframed, and you can see everything that's been going on. Now, here's one issue that I kind of ran into. I was here at this point in time, frame 60, when I set this animation up. So if we were to apply this, we'll close this out, we'll open it back up, and we'll hit play. It looks fine. But if I want to adjust some further keyframes, my initial raising of the arms is down here at... 60 frames in out of 80 frames so 75 percent of the way through if you've never worked with keyframing before or you have you know it's important to set your keyframes do your adjustments and continue on so for example if i want to raise another arm at this point in time it's going to affect everything else before and after it but you can adjust other things so let's say for example i take his neck i'm going to rotate the neck to make it look like he's looking so we'll go back to keyframe zero Add a key, keep it here. I want it at zero to start off with. We'll move up a little bit. We'll rotate his head over this direction and we'll add a key. We'll go over here, rotate his head back to here, add a key, and we'll hit apply. Now, if we were to play this back, our character's head should look like it's rotating. Now it stops at this last point here. So we'd want to go to the last keyframe add a key and make sure it's set to zero and in theory he should kind of head should wobble back and forth hit apply to apply so it saves it we can close it open it back up and there's a little animation playing like we want it of course since it is key framing you have the ability to edit the keys like any other editor maybe our rotation on our neck isn't what we want let's go ahead and hide our pitch and our yaw whoops hide not lock now here's just our rotation we can grab some keys, for example. I'm using Shift to multi-select my four keys. I can right-click on it. I can set it to auto, so that way we get a little bit of curve in and out, so it's a little smoother. We can, of course, oh, that one's too much rotation on that side. Whoops, I have all selected. Let's not do that. Let's go back and hide these ones again. It's too much rotation here. Grab this key, maybe move it over here for less rotation earlier. And of course, you can adjust. It's a keyframe editor. It's a normal editor inside the system at keyframes. You can do all your stuff. But this is a way to get a new animation out of existing animations without going out to a separate program. It's useful for, like, me. I'm not an artist, but I can make simple little changes using existing animations and not have to open up Maya or Max or Moto or anything else. Now, these are just two small ways of doing it, editing the original animations. There are other ways you can do blendings and bone changes inside of your anim blueprint. Or you can use the recommended way, which is actually getting the original files, making your changes to the source and bringing them back in. This way, you're not doing things like taking an animation and using additive layer tracks, which are then adjusting at runtime and have a smaller performance hit. Trying to keep things as pure as possible would give you the best results. And that's it. That's basically how you can do small animation changes inside of the engine using both the record animation system and the additive layer track system, which uses keyframing.